When doing your business in Diamond City, sometimes a guard will walk by and talk to you about the Museum of Witchcraft. Word is, something bad went down in the old Museum of Witchcraft up near Salem. Why would anyone even go there? Been abandoned forever. This starts a miscellaneous quest to discover the Museum of Witchcraft and it places the museum on your map. Upon arriving, we find that the building almost looks like a castle. It looks like it's been in Massachusetts for quite some time. But the door is chained shut from the other side. Looks like we have to find another way in. While exploring the grounds outside the museum, you can find a hollowed out rock behind the museum by some gravestones. Inside the rock, you find some ammunition, a sniper rifle, and a note simply labeled, Note. The note is rather cryptic, S. Been too long, sorry I missed you at Megaton. Looks like history repeats itself. But as promised, here's the gear I scrounged up. All the best, stay safe. The Commonwealth is its own kind of hell. E. Near the crumpled house, you find yet another hollowed out rock. And inside we find nearly the exact same inventory, including a duplicate of the same note. This note not only has the exact same contents, but it shares the same inventory spot in your miscellaneous list. So what does this letter mean? Well, it's a reference to Fallout 3. In Fallout 3, if you walk south of Megaton, you find a hollowed out rock and inside we find a note that reads S. Here's that stuff you wanted. If anyone asks where you got it, say it was a gift from your grandma. Happy hunting, E. Looks like S and E keep missing each other. By decades, apparently. So who are S and E? Well, we don't know. This is not explained in the note, and it appears to simply be an Easter egg reference to Fallout 3. To my knowledge, these are the only hollowed out rocks in Fallout 4. I believe the second one here by the Museum of Witchcraft is a mistake, considering it has the same inventory with the same note. My guess is that Bethesda meant to do one of these rocks, was trying to decide where they wanted to put it, either by the graves or by the wrecked house, coded both of them, and forgot to remove one. That's my guess. Around the corner, we find the corpse of Private Hart. He's dressed like a gunner, and on his body we find Private Hart's holotape. Jeffries, Lee got the recorder working. So this is the sort of detail you had in mind when you signed up for the gunners? Hauling luggage from Lynn Woods for some robot butler? Uh, what was his name, uh, Wellington? <laughs> Wellingham? Not now, Private. Where's Connors? He's not at his post. Oh, uh, sorry, sir. The lieutenant said he found some tracks. Wanted to check them out. Private Martin. Tracks? What track? What the hell is that? Oh my... Connor! Where, where's the rest of him? Jesus. Found us. Sergeant Lee grabs the case. Do not let that thing out of your sight. Everyone inside the museum, now! Major! Major, what found us? Okay, we gather that the other gunners hid inside the museum, but what happened to the monster? Close to Private Hart's body is a hatch leading to the basement. It looks like whatever killed Private Hart followed the gunners inside. This all must have happened just moments ago. The creature is still here in the museum, clearly consuming one of the corpses above. The basement is full of twists and turns and mannequins. How many gunners did this creature kill? Up the staircase and through the door, we find yet another gunner. Rounding the corner, we see that we're in the exhibit portion of the museum. And through the broken wall, we come face to face with the inevitable. Once dead, if you go through the wall and round the corner towards the bathrooms, we find some cracked death claw eggs and the corpse of Sergeant Lee. On his body is yet another holotape, which tells us the rest of the story. A nest full of death claw eggs. A dozen, maybe more, smashed to bits. Except this one. No wonder they wouldn't tell us what was in that case. 
if I'd known, I would have personally told the gunner bosses and that glorified liquor cabinet Wellingham to take those Diamond City caps and stuff them. I guess we know why that Death Claw tracked us all the way from Lynn Woods now. <laughs> we stole her damn kids. Christ. Maybe. Maybe if we just return the eggs. Oh, hey, Mama. You looking for this? Loot the pristine Deathclaw egg and you now have a couple of options. But first, since we're in the museum, we might as well take a look at the exhibits. Most of the exhibits are completely wrecked, but this one has held up well after 200 years. Some of the mannequins are still standing and it looks like we have a witch in a noose. I'm not sure what this one is, it just looks like a man and a woman standing. But it's a good thing we explored because on the table we find another issue of Grognak the Barbarian, which increases the damage of unarmed and melee critical hits by 5%. This one looks like your typical witch burning scenario. We are in Massachusetts after all. We find a female mannequin tied up to a stake with a crowd of onlookers egging her on. What a wonderful world. Well, now that we have the pristine Deathclaw egg, we have a couple of options. The first, of course, is to return to Wellingham in Diamond City and give him the egg. You waiting on a delivery? Of some Deathclaw eggs, maybe? What are you? Oh, the eggs. Oh, you must be with those, uh, gunny people. Though your superior had implied there would be more of you, but... Oh, no matter. The negotiated fee was 200 caps per egg. Though our clientele do expect nothing short of the most pristine death claw eggs. Now, do you have something for me? What exactly are you planning to do with the eggs? Hmm. Well, if you must know, one of our patrons has been asking after a cooked death claw egg, a la Weddingham, for some time. But with your, albeit late, arrival, I can finally make good on his request. The make good. <laughs> Already beginning to speak like one of you. Here, take it. At last. What, is this it? Where are the rest? All the others made the trip up to that big Deathclaw nest in the sky. That's so. I suppose this will have to do. Yeah, for a less than adequate job, but a job nonetheless. And the special request your superior made? Major Jeffries, was it? I trust you can get this to its destination. Don't just go waving it around willy-nilly. Bellingham, has my breakfast finally arrived? Oh, yes, sir. Endless apologies for the ludicrous lateness of it all. It shall be ready post-haste. You, on your way now. I've yoked a poach. Choosing this option grants you positive affinity gains with Kate and Piper. Dance doesn't like this option. You also gain the ability to craft the Deathclaw Wellingham at your local cooking station. You also learn the ability to craft the Tasty Deathclaw Omelet, even though the game doesn't tell you this upon completing the quest. You only discover it when you go to a cooking station. What these two new food items do is a little confusing. When you examine the Deathclaw Egg Omelet inside your cooking station, it says that it increases heal rate, giving you a small health regen for two hours, but it doesn't say by how much. Now, the Deathclaw Wellingham has a similar similar description, it says it increases heal rate, but strangely it doesn't give you a description near the requirements section. It doesn't tell you how long the effect lasts. Now upon cooking and eating both items, we get the exact same status effect. Both items increase your healing rate by 11.5. So I'm not sure why this quest would give us two Deathclaw egg derived items that have exactly the same effect, other than the fact that they stack. Both of these effects are active at the same time. which could potentially become very useful. Another option for completing this quest is to return the pristine Deathclaw egg to its nest. You find the Deathclaw's nest west of Parsons Creamery. As you approach the nest, a Deathclaw climbs down from his roost, but he doesn't attack. Instead, you can walk up to his nest, which acts like a container, and place the egg inside. If you do, the Deathclaw will kick dust and dirt over the nest, apparently making the egg warmer, and then he leaves you alone. If you choose this option, you complete the quest, and you're able to retrieve the Deathclaw gauntlet lying on the ground. 
It's not a legendary or unique item, but Death Clock Gauntlets themselves are fairly rare, so it's a great opportunity to find one. Later in the game, you can find legendary ones dropping off of legendary enemies. Be careful which companions you take with you when completing this quest because your decisions here affect your affinity with them. Only Piper and Nick like it when you return the egg to the nest. Kate, Kiri, Preston, Deacon, and Strong all dislike it, and Dance hates it. If you go to Wellingham and sell him the egg directly after the Museum of Freedom, Kiri and Piper will like it, and they'll also like it if you ask for more money. But Dance dislikes this option as well. It's just good not to have Dance. Just don't take him with you if you do this quest. But there is a third option. After returning the egg and completing the quest and looting the Deathclaw gauntlet, you can then steal the egg back. The Deathclaw will immediately attack you, forcing you to kill it. Hancock, Deacon, Kate, Preston, and McCready like it if you do this. Piper, Curie, and Nick dislike it if you do this, and as expected, Dance hates it. Dance just doesn't like anything to do with death claws, apparently. You can then take the egg back to Wellingham, but he responds differently. I would. What have you done to it? It's like it's been through a sewer. I can't serve that. I'll give you this much. Just get that thing out of my sight. Here. You don't get as much money, and you don't learn the Deathclaw Wellingham cooking recipe. However, you do learn the Deathclaw omelet. So I mentioned all of your companion's affinity reactions to this quest to bring up the following question. Which is the moral option? Is it better, morally speaking, to sell the egg to Wellingham or to give it back to its mother? Well, I think it's interesting that Nick and Piper are the only companions that like it when you return the egg to the Deathclaw nest. I think that's because they have more of a live and let live outlook to life, especially Nick. Not all, but many of the others have some kind of cause that they filter the world through. Dance sees everything through the lens of the Brotherhood of Steel. Kate sees everything through the lens of her drug addiction. Even though you're not addicted to chems, she can't respect your freedom as an individual to use chems around her. She dislikes that. Strong only sees the world through might by violence. But Nick in particular is more likely to make a decision about a person based on that person, not by the group that they're affiliated with, not necessarily by their ideology. And I tend to agree with Nick most of the time. I hate the children of Adam and I kill them whenever I see them, except for when I go to Far Harbor because there, they're not violent. There, they don't attack you on sight. The only people they kill are themselves, but by finishing the DLC, you have the option to turn them peaceful, and so I spared them, even though I kill all the other children of Adam on sight. That's how I think Nick is responding to this. Yes, he kills all other Deathclaws on sight, but this one isn't attacking him. This one is peaceful, and so he likes it if you return the egg. For me, although I respect Nick and I normally agree with him, I disagree with him on this one because I side with the furtherment of humanity as a species instead of respecting the life of one Deathclaw. If you look around the Deathclaw's nest, yes, you find the corpses of raiders and gunners, but you also find the corpses of settlers and scavengers. You find human skeletons strewn all over the place. The Deathclaws even use human skeletons to make their nest. These are not people, these are not parts of any faction, these are monsters. They have no redeeming quality. Yes, they are living creatures, and as living creatures, I don't think that they're being morally bad by killing everything that they see. I don't think that they're being morally bad by wanting to rescue their eggs and save their young. They're animals. Morality doesn't have a place in the animal kingdom, in my opinion. That's not a question of right and wrong with animals, but I do believe that morality has a huge role in the human kingdom. When I talk about morality in my videos, I often get comments from people saying, well, morality is not black and white, Oxhorn, and well, it's really a gray area, Oxhorn. And I agree, morality is not always black and white, but it's also not gray. Morality is a spectrum between black and white. It both contains gray, but it also contains black and white. That means that yes, there are many gray areas in life, but there are also black and white areas. Some things are just morally good. 
and some things are just morally evil. And while it's true that a moral action does depend upon a person's unique interpretation of morals, I do believe that there are some things that are right or wrong, whether or not there's a human there, to judge whether it's right or wrong. That there is a fundamental goodness in this world and a fundamental evil. And I believe that those fundamental morals even exist in the Fallout universe. That just because nuclear bombs have dropped does not erase those fundamental laws of human nature. So in my opinion, since I value human life, I believe that it's wrong to return the egg to the nest. If you do, you're allowing one more death claw to be raised to adulthood, whereupon it will wreak havoc upon humanity, killing countless children, countless mothers, countless fathers, countless humans. I am a human, I am on the side of humanity, I root for humankind, and in this case, I vote against the death claw. But that is just one man's humble opinion, ladies and gentlemen, and I would love to learn yours. What decision did you make when it was your turn to decide whether or not to give the egg back to its mother or fry it up on a skillet? Do you use either the Deathclaw Wellingham or the Deathclaw Omelette in your everyday gameplay? Do you find them to be useful aid items? Let me know in the comments below. I read all of the comments you guys leave on my videos, and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. So if you have a request, make it there. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to my private Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here today watching this video. Thank you so much for watching and tune in tomorrow morning to see what I publish next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early with a brand new video.